Hi, I'm Kevin, and I'm a geek. I really like working on mathematical problems and explaining them to people. I've retired from a job at a big industrial research lab where a lot of my work consisted of just that. Now that I'm on my own for a while, I'm looking for whether I can get the same sort of fun out of explaining things in videos. A lot of what I've done involves various aspects of geometry and image processing, but I'm likely to stray far and wide because the field of mathematics is all connected. In a recent video series, there should be a link somewhere nearby, I covered the image analysis that got from running a punched card through a document scanner to picking the bits off the card to recover its information. I glossed over some important details, so I plan a couple of videos to fill in some of the image processing basics that I assumed. This one is the first in that series. In image processing and computer vision, we frequently want to identify significant objects from the background of an acquired image and give them labels. This process is called image segmentation. It consists generally of two things. First, by some means, we have to separate objects in the image from the background and from each other. This separation generally consists of labeling individual pixels as an object or not an object. Then we have to group together the contiguous pixels belonging to the objects and assign some labels. That's what I'll be covering here. This task is a special task of a general problem that goes by many names because it turns up in so many places in computing. If you want to search for it with a search engine, you need to look at a whole array of keywords and phrases. It's called connected component labeling, or disjoint sets data structure, or the problem of finding equivalence classes, or the union find algorithm. As you may have guessed from the names, it comes up in many domains other than image processing. To understand the general problem, it's perhaps easiest to proceed with a concrete example. Imagine that you're a computer network administrator. Your users have computers, and there are communication links between the computers. A network is connected if there is some way to send a message from every machine to every other machine by relaying over some chain of the communication links. You learn about the existence of the links one at a time and want to keep track of whether the network as a whole is connected. For instance, in this network, you learn that there is a link between Alice's machine and Janet's, one between Bob's and Jean's, one between Carol's and Kevin's, and so on. You want to find out when you finally have the link that joins the network. For instance, here, a link from Alice's machine to Jean's will connect everything. Solving problems like this is a critical building block to the larger algorithms, such as Kruskal's construction of the minimum spanning tree of a graph. We see how the term connected components came about. We're dealing with the connected pieces of abstract networks. The term equivalence classes comes from the domain of modern algebra, where an equivalence relation is defined as a Boolean function among pairs of a set of objects, and the function is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. Again, it's often easier to imagine something concrete. Imagine you have a group of people at a party, and everybody follows the three rules. They're friendly with themselves. If Alice is friends with Bob, then Bob is friends with Alice. If Alice is friends with Bob and Bob is friends with Carla, then Alice is friends with Carla. You learn about individual pairs of friends and want to answer, what is the greatest possible number of distinct groups of friends given what you know? Being a mathematician, you of course write down the problem in mathematical notation, and you call those groups the equivalence classes under the given equivalence relation. Expressed in this form, the problem is at the heart of unification algorithms, 
which turn up all the time in logic programming, theorem proving, and some other types of machine learning and artificial intelligence. Since the question specifies that the groups of friends are disjoint, the technique that answers it also winds up being called the disjoint set data structure. It's convenient when programming such a thing to choose a single element from each of the disjoint sets and use it as a label for the whole set. We call this element an exemplar or a representative of the set. I'm afraid that I've indulged here in what Joel Spolsky calls architectural astronautics. I've taken the question to such a height of abstraction that people start to run out of oxygen and get nosebleeds. Let's come back to Earth and image processing. Label the interesting or is an object pixels in an image with ones and the rest of the pixels with zeros. Put each interesting pixel in a set by itself. We can find the objects in the image by comparing each pixel with the one above it and the one to its left. If we find the two pixels are both interesting and perhaps equal in some other respect, we introduce an equivalence between them. At the end, we read out the disjoint sets, and those are the objects in the image. To make sure you're secure with the idea, let's run through it very quickly. The white dotted upper left marks the first interesting pixel that we see. It becomes the first pixel in a new region. This pixel is in the same region as the pixel on its left, and so it becomes part of the same region. This pixel is the start of a new region, and a group of pixels to its right will each join it in turn. This pixel is the start of a new region for now. The next couple of pixels merge with it. This pixel merges with both the region to the left and the one above. They become the same region, and we go on merging pixels into the two regions that we are building. This row has the tops of what appear to be three new regions, together with one pixel that merges into the region above it. Now we're merging each interesting pixel into one of four regions. When we get down here, we find that two of these regions under construction are really the same region and unite them. From here on in, we just keep uniting single pixels until we've identified five contiguous objects. So our abstract definitions for finding disjoint sets work fine for finding disjoint sets of pixels. You might imagine that the regular structure of a pixel grid might mean that a general algorithm would have poor performance but we'll see that the general approach is so good there's usually no point in trying to improve it. Let's move on to a concrete design. We have a requirement for a data structure that can manage an arbitrary collection of disjoint sets drawn from an arbitrary collection of objects. It can be initialized with each object in a set by itself. It then needs to support only two operations, union, which unites the subsets the two objects belong to, and find, which finds the unique representative of the set that a given object belongs to. For the requirements that we've outlined, it doesn't need to support any sort of splitting of the sets. Once a union has been done, it will never be undone. Those whom the algorithm has united, let no one divide. We can do inefficient management of the sets by maintaining a single link with each object called parent. Initially, the parent of each object is itself. The general rule is that an object that is its own parent is the representative of its set. The other links form a tree pointing upward toward the root. To find the representative of an object's set, we simply follow the parent links until we reach the root of the tree or the representative of the set. And to unite two objects, we find the representatives of their sets. If they're different, we combine the sets by changing the parent link of one to point to the other. Let's follow how this works by going through it on a 5x5 pixel image. 
We start by unifying pixels A and B. Find if A returns A and find if B returns B. We make B the parent of A. Similarly, we make C the parent of B and so on. The node labeled F has no labeled neighbor above or to the left, so it starts a new tree. Then we start merging pixels again. The node labeled J also starts a new tree, but the node labeled K needs to merge both with the region to its left, making it the parent of J, and with the node above it, making K the parent of G as well. There's another couple of straightforward merges. Then we find out that node N is similar to node K. It merges first with M's region, and then with J's region. Note that J has a parent node, so we'll walk the chain to the root node K before linking to N. Now we can enumerate the components by running find on each pixel in turn, using the representatives as keys in a hash table. In this loop, we can accumulate any descriptive statistics that we please about the pixels, so we could further classify regions by area, density, circularity, or whatever properties we like. Now we see what the problem is with our naive approach. We've built long chains of pixels, and we will walk along them repeatedly as we make the repeated calls to find. The result is an algorithm that runs in big O of n squared time in the worst case, where n is the number of pixels. We can surely do better. Because I try to keep these videos to a manageable length, I'm going to take a break now and devote the next episode to making the algorithm faster. There are a handful of simple modifications to our union and find procedures that will eventually get it down to nearly linear time with no additional memory requirements. Stay tuned for that! In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep calculating!